Thanks for joining me once again today. I am very excited to introduce my guest for today, Alan Barker. Alan has a passion for finding opportunities and developing ways to profit from them. He has accidentally created four different successful businesses and has created jobs for hundreds along the way. In 2012, he started Infinite Discs, which is now the largest disc golf retailer in the world. His chief priority is his family, and he is happily married, residing in Smithfield, Utah, and with his four boys and his two-year-old princess. Alan, welcome to the show. Thanks. It's, it's good to be here. Fantastic. Well, I, have, I appreciate you coming on. So Alan and I have known each other for quite a few years. Before, before we started here, I was just thinking about how long. I mean, I believe it's back. I mean, 2009 or 10, maybe somewhere. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Because uh, I moved to Smithfield 10 years ago. And so. So it would have been. Yeah, probably that. 2009 to 2011. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, there's been a lot that has happened in those years. I know with your business specifically here. Uh, yeah, we, much we of, both have a few more gray hairs discs. since, you know, we, <laughs> we saw definitely do. Definitely. Yeah, if you look at the YouTube version of this podcast, you can you can see that we definitely, definitely do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, it's fun. Well, there's been so many fun things, and, I, and I've caught up a little bit with Alan recently on the phone, and as we were talking about all the things he was doing, I've been – following him and following his company for a number of years and I just just thought man it is time to have have Alan on the show so so I appreciate you coming on all right well let's uh let's see if anybody else appreciates what I have to say <laughs> I love it I love it well well as we get started here I really would love for people just to hear a little about your story where you came from how how you came to uh to start the what's now the largest disc golf retailer in the world. So how, how did this all happen? Yeah, okay, we're, we're gonna go way back. We're gonna go back to the year 1995 and 1996, which was when I was in high school. And the reason that was so significant is that's when the internet was brand new. And so, you know, as a high school, you know, a little, little bit of a geek, uh, I, I made websites, you know, just just for fun, just as jokes. But I learned to make websites, and that was was pretty significant. So then I uh, went went off to college to Rick's College in 1997, and and planning on majoring in computer information systems. And so so I'm in my my internet class my HTML class in in 1997 and most of the people in my class, you know, I would just been doing stuff on the internet for a couple of years and, and most of the, the other people in my class were newly returned missionaries who basically it was their first exposure to the internet. And so, so I was like really ahead of everybody. I was so smart because I knew how to make websites and you know, all these things that, that they had missed out on for a couple of years. So, so I went there for school for a year, served a two-year mission in Canada, uh, came back, and then I was, the world had drastically changed between 1998 and 2000, and, and the internet had gone to new levels, and I realized I wasn't a computer geek. I couldn't keep up. So so I switched my major to business management uh, just because it, it seemed, you know, I had some classes that kind of applied, and it seemed like it could be relevant. But I never had any intention of, of starting businesses or forming businesses uh, because I, you know, I didn't consider myself a risk taker. And you know, that's what we learned about. You, you got to be willing to take a risk to, to start a business. So uh, meanwhile, while, while I'm at college for summer jobs, there was the opportunity to do door to door sales, selling pest control. So I did that one summer and, and it worked pretty well, made, made some pretty good money. Uh, and then the following year, there was an opportunity to sell dish network systems. This is when satellite technology was pretty new, the, the little at-home satellite dishes. So, so I, I did that for a summer. And then that, that's right when I was graduating from college. And, and I had no idea what to do. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. So, so I actually started my, my first business as a dish network door-to-door sales company. 
And so I basically just got a bunch of my friends and, and we, we went places that we wanted to go and we would go and we would live in, in Tucson, Arizona, Reno, Nevada, Lubbock, Texas, wherever we thought an opportunity presented. And then after we'd get tired of it, we'd move on to, to somewhere else. And, and it was fun as a single guy, really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a lot, a lot of hard work, a lot of rejection, definitely not anything I wanted to do forever. So, uh, as a good upside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, but Probably, but right? the, the big and... thing in, and yeah, oh, it was fun with the, the, the friends. And, but then I, I met my wife while I was in Reno, Nevada. And, uh, you know, as a married person, it was a little different. My priorities had, had already shifted a little bit instead of just work all day and then have fun with, with the, the guys, uh, to, you know, getting, getting ready to actually start a family. So, uh, what really, significantly turned things is is while they're in Lubbock, Texas with my wife. She she'd been with me for a couple months as as newlyweds. And I injured my knee playing basketball. Meanwhile, my wife, who is from Reno, her family moved to Cache Valley. And uh because so, of that so reason, Utah. For anybody not from around these parts, the very yep yeah, furthest north part of Utah. Uh, and that's not Beautiful the part of Utah is from. World. Oh, it, it is gorgeous, <laughs> especially this time of year. It's starting to get a little brown, but oh, I love spring, and that's just one of the things I live for. Just so fun, just being out, you know, on bike rides, on walks with my family, and it's it's just a, a great place to live. Uh, so, f- for whatever, for no reason particular, but my wife was actually helping her family move to Cache Valley, and I'm like, well, I injured my knee, so I pretty much can't do door-to-door sales anymore, and, and, and I was ready to shut down the business anyway, so we moved here to here to the Logan area uh, while I was recovering from my, my knee injury, which turned out to be a major ACL injury, and I never went and saw a doctor or anything, which was a mistake, but... Uh, it, you can't change things that happened in the past now. So that's something you can learn. If you have a major knee injury, get it taken care of. Exactly. Um, so so we were up here and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Fortunately, I had earned good money and I had lived frugally. I, you know, I had a very healthy savings. Uh, so I guess one of, one of kind of my original intents when, when you're a, a kid and you it's really hard to know what you want to be when you grow up because you don't experience anything other than school. Uh, and so, sure. you know, I, I had experienced school. I'd gone to school and so I'm like, yeah, I, I think I could be a pretty good teacher. So my thought was I want to be a teacher, but I didn't want a teacher's pay. Um, and, and so, so my thought was, well, here's, here's what I could do. If I can have enough money to buy a house like free and clear so that I don't have a mortgage payment, then I could probably afford to be a teacher was, was the rationale in my, my mind. So, so I decided, okay, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll get my real estate license. I have, you know, I had a, had a, a good deal of money saved up in the bank. And so I was planning on buying a, essentially, initially it was just a house for myself, but then I learned about investment properties and how that could be a good way. So, so I ended up buying a duplex that, we lived in for a year and then, and then I, I bought a, a house in the, in the neighborhood where, where we lived together. So it, that was the plan. So while, while doing real estate, uh, I based, we, we go back to my internet, my Clark string fellow class at Bountiful high school. And, and I made my own website and this is, this is 2005 by then and the internet is still was very unknown by most real estate agents and so at the time very few agents had websites and i i learned i built my website and i learned search engine optimization how to make it so anybody looking for a real estate agent in logan utah would would find me so before long even though i was brand new to the area i knew no people i had more business than i could handle and i i had too many clients and it was really fun. It was really exciting at first, as, as it always is when you're, you're growing something. But it got to the point where I was t- overwhelmed and tired of, of never having weekends or evenings and always being on demand. That's uh, kind of what happens when you're a, a real estate agent. So uh, I, 
I had all these these leads more than I could handle. So I shifted my business and I, I worked with a local real estate company called Cornerstone Real Estate where instead of me working with all the people, I essentially sold the leads to them. And that, that was essentially my second my my second business. Um then from then it was like, well, if I can do this in one market in the U.S., why can't I take this same model and expand it everywhere? Which was was my my next business. So I started a company called Boomerang Leads in in 2010, and I got a partner and and we we tried to grow really fast, and we had tons of employees, uh, lots of people working, and, and we were building these websites and for these real estate agents and and we were doing really well uh it was it was a little bit harder to manage than than locally because we didn't have personal contact and our business model relied a lot on honesty because the we'd make our money when the real estate agent would actually sell a house and then we would count on them paying us a referral commission and so it it wasn't working quite as well uh Meanwhile, during during this time in in 2011, I just started playing disc golf, and this was just for fun. I had the skills making websites and search engine optimization, and one of my employees also played disc golf, and so we decided just for fun, let's start a blog where we review discs. Huh. Um, the the intent was, hey, this is something we do anyways. Maybe we can make a little money off of it. Well, the disc golf the online disc golf market was far less competitive than real estate. And we were able to get those number one Google rankings really, really easy. And so we, we started to change the, the attitude to, well, we can actually make some money off of this. This is, this is not just a hobby. Um, but you have so, people that want this gear and don't have uh, yeah, an easy way to find it, right? Exactly. And, and the yeah. thing I really didn't understand is because at the time I was, I was a recreational player for the most part. And I, and I didn't realize that for a lot of people, disc golf is a lifestyle. This is what they live for. It's their hobby. And so it's, it's so much more than, oh, I need a set of discs that I'll use once and for years and years. It's, no, I need every new disc released by every new brand because I need to try it. I need that next thing that will help me to throw farther or something might be collectible. And so once I realized that, I, I saw how big this small industry really is. Um, so yeah, so that's how Infinite Disc started. Uh, it, it actually kind of started that there was another company in Utah. It was called Altitude Disc Golf. And so I'm like, hey, let's partner with these guys to see if if uh, we, we can work with them. Well, just as, as I reached out to them, they were actually going out of business. So I offered. That's giving you a lot of confidence for your new business, right? You're like, oh, oh great confidence. But it, it was actually a very motivating factor because I'm like, hey, can I just yeah. buy this business from you? And and the guys were like, no, we have our own exit strategy. And it kind of ticked me off. I'm like, okay, fine. I'm just going to make my own business that that will show you that that we can do it. Uh, That's and we did. And uh, so Infinite Disc officially started almost ten years ago in November of 2012. Um, I've been talking a lot. You have any follow-up questions for me? No, that's so fun. Well, the crazy thing is, 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 is right during that time, that was, uh, that was just a month or two after we left the Valley. Actually. Right. Is, is right then, right as you started. So we, yeah, we, we missed this just barely, but, uh, but man, that is exciting stuff. So let's, let's get a little background then. So, so yeah, I mean, you have, you have went from a few different types of businesses, all honestly using some of your unique skills and and once again learning to work hard uh in the sales side of things using your your internet skills and seo and and then you're to this point in your life so so what does your life look like at this point so you're married um yeah so, so, uh, so at that time at when point? infinite disc started i had three kids um uh three boys um my oldest boy would have been five uh, five-year-old a two-year-old and a, and a newborn also, uh, at this this time, uh, my so my third child is autistic, and he was the most difficult baby ever. Um, my wife also experienced during this time some 
postpartum depression. And it was, it was a, a really, you know, kind of unusual, hectic time to be uh, starting a new business, a uh, few family issues. I uh, also will, uh, I'm sure you have some members of the church of, of, of our denomination listeners. And, and I was called as Elder Scorn President, which was uh, kind of ironic because one of the reasons I wanted to leave Logan was because I was trying to avoid getting a big church calling. Um, but then I, I got it anyways when I moved to Smithfield. So, so it was, it was a, a very busy time. Um, and, and I'd say the, one of the, the big keys is that in my previous businesses, I had been frugal and I had adequate savings. And if it weren't for those, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, step back to start something new. It was, it was a good two years before I ever took any salary, any income for myself from Infinite Discs. Um, and so, yeah, being willing to sacrifice and having my wife is like, hey, we're, we're going to go. And this, my wife was not pleased when I told her this, but we're, we were going to have a household recession while we, we kind of uh, sacrificed a little <laughs> a bit household to, recession. I to, like to <laughs> get these, these things going. So, yeah, so, so that's where the, the family was out. Initially, it was just me and a business partner. And then we ended up hiring one person and, and the business uh, kept growing in lots of different ways. And we would nearly double our business each year. And then once the pandemic hit in 2020, it uh, increased at whole new levels and, and we had all kind of supply shortages. And so we, we had to be really creative in in the ways we'd get products. So increased demand, right? Because yeah. you have people that want to get outside, but also supply challenges. Yes. Oh, man. So yes. tell us no, about did, that. How did, how did, did, so how did you get through that? Yeah. Yeah, we, we had to be really creative. Uh, and fortunately for us, because we were already the number one retailer for most of these manufacturers, they they would still put priority on us. It's like, hey, we only have a, they only had a limited number of, of products that they could sell. And it's a lot easier for them to send us, you know, a good portion of it than distribute among 20 other guys. So, so, so that was one thing that helped, but also it still wasn't enough. We had limits and allocations of what we could receive that couldn't meet the demand that we had. And so we reached out to all these international companies that just weren't popular here in the U.S. and, and had, had, would get big shipments from, from overseas. Uh, and then that kind of led us to, to, well, now we have an opportunity. We were getting all these foreign discs for less expensive. Let's start distributing these in the U S because we know these, these other little disc golf retailers, they don't have enough product. And so we, you know, it was another opportunity based on this circumstance to kind of expand into a new line. And so this, this wholesaling, wholesaling aspect of our business is, is something new within the last year, which presents its own new challenges. And, and now we're seeing the market shift where the supply has caught up and the, the demand is still very high, much higher than before the pandemic, but it's not, uh, it, 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 it's, it is slowing down a little bit, but now that the big names, the big players in disc golf have enough product, it's uh, we have to do marketing again. So uh, always new challenges, which is, is one of the really fun things about being a business owner. So uh, in the years that Infinite Discs you know, kind of went, the, the nice thing was right before the pandemic, I was at a state of business where I didn't have to do everything anymore. I'd figured out a way to delegate. And so I had a lot of freedom, which was really my ultimate goal with, with my, my business. So it was actually when we were getting wedding photographs, the, the guy doing our wedding Photograph said he had a goal to be retired by he was by the time he was forty, and so you know that that kind of planted some seeds in my mind saying yeah that would be really nice and so I you know didn't really have the goal to be retired because that's that's not as productive but but I wanted the goal to be I want to be so that I can always be there for my family that I can yeah. go on vacations when when I want to go that when there's something important or when there's there's a service that needs to be done or people that need to be helped. I'm in position where I can leave, which is, is always been the motivation factor of 
of owning my own business so that I could have that, that freedom and flexibility. That's so excellent. Oh, that's awesome. No, that's so fun. Yeah. You, like you said though, you know, so, so often people, uh, want that end result, right? What you're getting right now, but, but don't want to go through the first part, <laughs> right? Which is the struggle and the uncertainty and, and some of those things that you have to go through on the front end yeah. to, to get that. And yes. So, and, and the, and one thing too, recommendation for family is, Hey, when I was very first married and before I had kids and when, you know, my oldest was very tiny, I would work ridiculous hours and because I, I knew I wanted to get ahead now and that has opened up the doors where the reality is in most weeks I don't work a 40 hour work week I I'm able to take the time to go to every cross-country meet and I coach my kids soccer and ultimate frisbee teams and um, but only because I did put in that work early when I did have the time that it now gives me the the flexibility I, I want so fun Oh, such a wonderful thing. That's such an exciting thing in a way. Once again, in your family, it's just it's just such an important thing to be able to to spend the time that that they need and as everybody's growing up, it's just a it's just a wonderful thing. Yes. Yeah, um I guess we'll we'll get into another family aspect. So, we had our our fourth child um and then it was another boy, four four boys. Uh and my wife won't admit this, but from the beginning, we were sure our first was going to be a girl, and she oh yeah had, she had three younger sisters. She really wanted a, a little girl, but we only have boys, and so you know. But we decided after that fourth pregnancy was really hard. She had postpartum depression, and so we you know we we were done with with our family for a while, and then certain things happened where she felt that we we needed to adopt a child. And so after, uh, you know, four years of, of, you know, having our youngest child big enough that, you know, he can do things himself, that they're, they're not difficult. We, we were able to adopt a, a little girl and that was, was, was such a blessing and, and a neat experience. Lots of little miracles that, that led that to happen. And, uh, she was the best baby ever which when you're over 40 it's it's a lot harder to you know have a a little child that can't sleep but she she slept so well now that she's a toddler she's she's uh definitely has some challenges but definitely need to have a uh, an additional family member added through adoption and and once again that was possible adoption is not cheap because of of work ethic and and things i've done in the past that made that opportunity and an option that's so amazing. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing. That's actually just like my family growing up. I grew up, I have uh, three That's other right. brothers. So my, so, my, so my family has four boys growing up, and I have my youngest as a sister. So it's exactly the same. Four boys, and then the youngest is a girl. So I, I think it's a pretty good way to grow up. So that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, that's so good. Oh, so many exciting things. Well, what, what else is getting you excited right now in business or life? Yeah, so one kind of really fun thing is is obviously when you're working and creating a business, that's the priority. When you get it to a state where other people do a lot of the work, you can focus more on yourself. And, and a couple of years ago, I made that decision. I wanted to work more on my, my own health. And so rather than going straight into work, I, I do my exercise each morning. And part of that is playing disc golf almost every day. Which which uh, I'm excited because even though now I'm older and technically shouldn't be as good, I'm I'm now playing the best get disc golf I've ever done, which is kind of fun and exciting. Uh, another thing I'm really looking forward to. So my my oldest son is now 16, and and this summer he signed up to do a humanitarian uh, trip, and so we're he's going to Cape Verde, Africa, to do to help build a oh. school. And they needed some parent volunteers, and and yeah. I'm I'm gonna go with him. And it, it's really fun because I haven't been this excited for any kind of trip for a really long time. And so bringing back the the youthful side. So I'm I'm gonna be heading to Capo Verde in a, in a couple of weeks here. So that's a couple of things that I'm is, excited on the the that business. That is so that is so fun. I 
So, so we've, we've talked a little about uh, missions for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints today, and uh, I served my mission in Mozambique. So oh, nice. Africa, which, is a, which, is a, which is a Portuguese speaking Also Portuguese speaking, country. speaking. yeah. And so, so I knew several people from Cabo Verde. So, um, so lots of fun. Very so, cool. Uh, yeah, so, anyway, my... so I love it. So we both speak Portuguese, and I've, I've been wanting to go, to go there at some point. So that's, that's pretty fun. Cool. And that, that's the reason we chose there. My children are in a Portuguese immersion program. So I don't speak Portuguese, and but so, I'm and excited so, to go there. And my kids are in a Portuguese immersion program here in our area as well. Oh, isn't that's that, awesome. Isn't that funny? Yep. I'll, I'll let you know how <laughs> it goes. Now, and, another thing, we need to get together and uh, yeah, have our kids speak here. That's fun. I love it. That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. That's super exciting. Okay. So I cut you off before you were telling us the next thing. That's very exciting now. Well, I forgot the next thing, so it wasn't important. So it wasn't, it wasn't that amazing. Well, I love it. Well, tell me if you remember. That's that's <laughs> fun. Okay. Well, that's that's very exciting, though. I mean, kids, it is such a fun thing. I know our kids from the Portuguese standpoint. Um, it's amazing how these these kids have such an ability to learn something. Honestly, it's very difficult. I mean, learning a language is not easy. And, and these kids, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I learned later in life and uh, my kids, I mean, they go to half their day in Portuguese, yeah. just like your kids, I'm sure. Right. And their, their, their teachers are from Brazil. And so they speak a little different Portuguese than I do, but uh, a little different accent and things, but, but it is, it is amazing. They're always like correcting me, you know, nice. uh, with my, <laughs> with my African Portuguese and they're, they're like, <laughs> they're like, that's not how you say that. I'm like, it's just an accent, you know, I'm not wrong. <laughs> But uh, but it's but it's fun. They're so smart, and uh, and it's 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 an amazing thing, and something they're so proud of being able to accomplish something so so big at such a young age. It's it's pretty cool. Yes, it is. That's fun. Oh man, well I love it. I love it. Well, well right on. Well as we as we get closer to the end of the of the show here today, I I one thing I always love to ask is is what top action step that you would have for my listeners. What, what would you, what would you say? What would, what would help them most in their life? Yeah. Okay. So one, one thing that, that really helped me that is, is I had goals. I had goals from the beginning and a lot of these were financial goals. Hey, the goal was, Hey, once I reach this level, then I want to step back to ensure I can spend that time with my family. But I kept finding that once I would, would hit that goal, it'd be like, well, Let's just keep going. I've got to really make sure I'm I'm financially secure, and and I think that that's a mistake because obviously money is is what it is and it does allow us to do things, but it's make sure once you have that goal and accomplish it, what is your real motive? Make sure you step back in and do that. And so for me, it's hey, spending time with more time with my family and on my my making sure that. I'm in good shape and, and have good health that, that I can be there for them. Uh, so, so that would be an action, obviously set goals, but make sure we keep that perspective in mind of, of what our, our true intent, what our ultimate goal really is. I love, I love that insight. There's so much wisdom there. You know, one thing I think about that we talk about occasionally on the show is, is we talk about, about getting clear on your future self, right? who you want to be in the future, right? And get clarity on that. And very often when we think about that, we're thinking about these big financial goals, right? Often as, as, as business owners and, and high achievers, we think, okay, we want to accomplish these amazing things. And so we think about who our future self is, who we want to be. And it's always, you know, often it's more money, more this, more that. But, but the reality is, is deciding who you want to be and then beginning to be that person now makes all the difference in the world. Uh, Dr. Benjamin Hardy just came out with a book by the, uh, called Be Your Future Self Now. And, and I, I love the book, highly recommend it. I'll have to put it in the show notes uh, for people to take, take a look if you'd like. Um, he, he talks a lot about this and getting clear on the things in life that matter and begin doing those things now. So I love what you said is is, and you and you can see it by your example and what you're doing and, and some of the stories you give is is you can be extremely motivated and do well financially but you but taking the time for your family and deciding what you want that to look like and then doing it and holding yourself to that that that's an amazing thing and it's a rare thing 
Most people don't do that. Most people often just go blindly and just keep their head down and grind. And yes. so, so easy so to get job. caught up in grinding more because there's, there's always more work and things you can do that you don't necessarily need to do or at least do yourself. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So many wonderful things. So, so let's say that people want to want to follow you, right? They want to connect with you or, you know, want to begin disc golf or, or they want to, you know, follow you in some other way. What's the, what's the best way for people to, to get in touch with you? Yeah, if, if people want to follow me personally, they're kind of out of luck. I, I don't do much, much of that. But my, my business, <laughs> if you want to learn about disc golf, it's infinitedisc.com infinite discs on all social media i have a instagram account infinite ab8 that i rarely ever post on but i'll try to post some stuff when i go to capo verge that's that's one of my my jobs as the the parent builder is is to post for their instagram account so um very fun but yeah that is in my business building a personal brand for myself is not anything that i've ever focused on or or tried to do but it's all been the names of the the businesses i love it i love it there's that that's that's amazing that's a great thing and so i'll actually put i'll actually put uh all of the links to those in the show notes so all right go 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 check out the company this is good stuff i love it i love it well, well, fantastic. Well, Alan, it's been so good catching up with you, and it's been so good to, to have you on the show and, and hear some of your insights and some of the wisdom that you have from, from your years in, in business and with your family. So thank you so much for, for being here. Okay, thanks for inviting me. It was something I was looking forward to for a while now. I love it. Well, thank you, and thank you all that are listening here today. Now you can go be the unrivaled man in your life. Thank you.